Good evening, everyone. We thank you for joining me. OMG, you know what I say for another live show. Woo, it's going to be on. You talking about power pack? Okay, I know. Y'all know how I do. I come out the gate like what? All right, let me try to just wind it in for a quick minute. <laughs> but I tell you this, I am ready. Oh my goodness. We have an awesome guest. Oh, there we go. All right, I got it tagged now. I got it tagged. You tagged in there, Rita, okay. And um, have an awesome guest. And we just thanking God for, for a great show. We got people chiming in, coming on. We ask you to uh, tag some names, get your friends here. We have something to say. And you, ooh, okay. I say that every two weeks we do the show. Um, but I want to tell you just a little bit about Embrace the Change while we know some people are uh, still connected. We know it takes a minute, you know, for the algorithms, good old Facebook, you know, for it to send all the notification out to the millions and thousands and hundreds of people that are connected. So we're going to give it a minute. So I will say uh, thank you for joining um, Embrace the Change uh, live show. Wow. We are ecstatic uh, that we get to come and serve and in this capacity uh, in a different format, reaching those that are hurting. That's what the fathers called me to, those that are hurting. And you know what? It's a different platform. But, you know, we have to do something different in this day and age. And uh, everything isn't always what it used to be. Okay, you'll figure that one out later. Mm hmm. I, 2020 haven't taught you that, but we were doing this before 2020. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure Reverend Reed can can relate to that. She has truly mm -hmm. been doing that uh, prior to um, prior to the uh, actual pandemic. And um, let me see. What else I need to say and embrace the change. We uplift, encourage, move my head down. We uplift, encourage, and empower <laughs> you to embrace your change. <laughs> Amen. Um, and that's just what we do. And we do it by uh, many streams. And this is one of those streams to have these live shows where we have these awesome topics and great speakers. We are not necessarily looking for, um, you know, the big extraordinary, I mean, you know, the big, you know, the big cross. The, I call it the Bible, the Bible uh, pulpit cross and the, you know, the pulpit Bible. We looking just for the everyday person who has been through, who can relate and um, who has a word. So. You know what? That's a lot of people. <laughs> and I tell you, these shows have just been phenomenal. Uh, those that we are able to reach and we are looking and expecting. And I'm just going to decree it right now that our um, our sphere of influence shall increase in a greater capacity. Ah, I felt you, Lord, in a greater capacity that we will uh, reach and assist those. Amen. So I am, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I am Dr. LaShawn. Thank you for enjoying my live show, Shifting Mindsets, where we have mindful conversations. Uh, my special guest this week is Reverend, what, what happened to Prophet? Is it one the Prophet is Reverend Rita? <laughs> Prophet Reverend Rita, you know, I've been knowing you for a while. I said, yes, I said, yes, I said yes, something yes. missing. She gave me this, but some Prophet is Reverend Rita. It was one more thing too, but I couldn't remember it, but that's okay. Um, Prophet is Reverend Rita. <laughs> We thank you for joining us 
this evening. OMG, when I tell you such a just a devoted person, uh, we have been connected uh, via Facebook for a few years now. Um, I'm not going to start counting the years, but I tell you this, we have definitely been connected and seeing each other evolve in our own capacity has, has just been a blessing. Um, yes, it has. Uh, you know, I remember when she was started doing her lives and she was like, oh my goodness. And now she's the pro. <laughs> He's the pro now. <laughs> and uh, Reverend Reader, she is a spiritual midwife in her own right. Uh, and a spiritual midwife, for those that don't know, they will help you uh, birth out that which is on the inside of you. Amen. And whatever that is, you know, so there's different uh, midwives for different things. So she has helped. It says hundreds, but I really think it's thousands. So I'm going to just prophesy. If it hadn't been hundreds, I'm going to prophesy and say she's helped thousands of people. And she helps Amen. birth their purpose and monetize their God-ordained talents and acquired skill set building by building successful faith-based businesses. And when she says it and on her life, she's much faster and rolling with it. I'd be like, what? what you just say? <laughs> 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 she is also an author. She has several books on Amazon. She is a best, two-time bestseller. Three, three times. Three, three times now. Go. Wow, three times, yeah. Now she done, I was like, two-time? Oh, she... Y'all, she just snuck one in on me. Now she's a three-time best-selling author. Hallelujah. Amen. I love it. Continuing to grow. Um, and definitely uh, the Father has graced her to lead uh, such a mighty group of people. Um, I'm a mm. part of that group. And I tell you, just her words alone. And, and I see, I, I don't say too much here and there, but I tell you, just from what I see, uh, she's definitely a mighty force in helping so many. You would you would be surprised at what she's doing behind the scenes, but uh, is definitely making a large footprint uh, yeah. because those that she she's helping, they then go forth and build, and right. those that go forth and build, they then help others. So that's why her hundreds is thousands actually. Amen. Ah. Amen. Amen. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Okay. All right. So that's not on this paper here, but uh, she <laughs> told you don't give me no paper. Uh, she, she helps thousands. And, um, and, and that's how we should be in the kingdom of God is that we be helpers one to another. Amen. And, um, uplifting and encouraging. All right. I, I've talked enough. Go ahead, Reverend Rita. Give us a hello. Amen. 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 Dr. LaShawn, I, I feel my help coming on. I thank God. Amen. Because when I first came on, I was a little tired, right? A little fatigued from the day. Um, but I thank God. So he gave me this. I want to read this. Um, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Salah. Yes. Psalms 24, 7 through 10. Oh my God, when I thought about, when I went into prayer about coming live, coming on this show, Dr. LaShawn, that is the scripture that the Lord gave me. Right. That's the scripture that he gave me. I don't know why, but I hope that blessed somebody. Right. Yes. Amen. I am prophetess Reverend Rita Monique Henderson. That's what that's, 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 it. Right. that's, that's it. it. That's it. I am. I am prophetess, prophetess Reverend Rita Monique Henderson. Um, I'm a speaker. I'm a self-publishing coach. I am the uh, the CEO of Five Fold Christian Publishing LLC and three time Amazon best selling author. But outside all the titles and the accolades, you guys, I am a faithful woman on a divine assignment to provide Christian ministers and leaders with the self-publishing strategies, resources, and guidance that they need to turn their stories into 
influential, income producing books that impact the world because your story can and will change lives. So I hope that helps. That's what I do. And Dr. LaShawn is right. We started out in these internet streets like so many years ago now. I want to say like 2016, 2017, like that 2018 maybe. It's been a and minute, yeah, yeah. What had, yeah, it's been a while. It's been mm -hmm. a while. And like she said, we watched each other evolve um over time right just just mm -hmm. watching each other from afar um but just watching each other watching god do a work in us in each one of us um as he positioned us in our purpose right yes. and so the topic of, of the show is i have been my own delay i have been my own delay that is the take today's topic oh my god so i don't know i don't know you got this going to have to i don't know should i just keep going or you just going like we're going to bounce back and forth like we we gonna we I know to I know we we gonna go back and forth. So she has definitely set it up. We are discussing. I have been my own delay, and I did a little infomercial uh, two days ago, and you know talking about being your own delay, and a lot of us have experienced that, where um, you know we're wondering why, how come this hasn't happened, or how come this hasn't taking off for me and seeing other people flourish. You know, when is my, my breakthrough coming? My breakthrough is now, you know, when God and you've been your own delay. Yes. The whole Amen. time. Okay. The go whole, ahead. Go the ahead. whole time. And so when I was thinking about that again, in prayer, God gave me three things. And so, and I've been my own delay and, you know, I've been there and, um, and, and, um, and God gave me the three things, three things to help you on tonight. Um, when it, when, and when I think about why I was my own delay and, and what was involved in right in that process, and He gave me these three things. He said first, clarity. And I don't know why He always deal with me with C's. I'm like, you gave me another, you gave me three C's the last time I was on that. But clarity, commitment, and consistency. Hmm. That's what he gave. He gave me clarity. Hello, hello, everybody. I see y'all. Hey, Dr. T. Hey, Tanya. Amen. She said, I know that's God. I meditate off of, off of that scripture. Amen. Psalms 24. That's right, 7 and 10. But he gave me three points. He gave me clarity, commitment, and consistency. Right? Mm -hmm. So just tell you a little bit about how I started out um, in this Jesus journey. Um, I, I, I wasn't born and raised in the church. Uh, I got saved. Um, around 2005, six, seven, right? But then I got saved for real, for real around 2011, right? That's when I really started hearing the voice of God. Well, no, in five, six, seven, I did too. But in 2011, July 18, 2011, um, on a Monday, it was a Monday as I was driving away from my good government job. And many of you have heard this testimony before, amen. But as I was driving away from my good government job after working 28 years, right? The Lord spoke to me at five o'clock that afternoon. He said, daughter, he said, when you drive away from here today, he said, don't you ever drive back here again. He said, and I promise you, Rita, he said, if you handle all of, if you handle my business, he said, I promise you, Rita, I will handle all of your business. And I never drove back to that job ever again. I was in, on that day, I was in over $100,000 worth of debt. I was going through a divorce, a bankruptcy. Uh, one of the cars had been, been repoed. I was relinquishing another car. I couldn't get an apartment because my credit score was so bad. But on that day, July 18, 2011, I drove away from that job. Amen. And I've been on this Jesus journey ever since, right? Amen. And and it's and it's been delayed. And why was my own delay? Clarity. Clarity. So I don't know. You want me to just keep going? Clarity. Let, let me let me chime in here. So um we definitely have to I love I love how you set this up. You you talked about, you know, where where you came from and what, what was going on. And and clarity, we, we got to have that direction. We got to have a focal point. We got to have a place that we're, you know, looking forward to. Um, let me let me put this here up on the um, on the screen. So Tanya said, uh, I delayed myself by holding on to a negative soul tie mm -hmm. in, in my ex. When the father, honestly, looking back, when the father um she couldn't see it due to a stronghold. Amen. So, you know, we definitely can relate to that. 
Um, thank you for sharing that. But um, we got to have clarity. We, we yeah, can't clarity. go. We, I mean, how do you how do you architect or, you know, design or build a new house or, or a new building if there is no blueprint? Mm -hmm. You got to have clarity. You got to know where you're going. You okay, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you do. You, Ooh. it's important for you to have clarity. And when I think about um, how long I've been out here in the internet streets, and like you said, I've been doing this for a minute, and I've been going live. I'm not a pro, but um, I have been going live a few years now, so much so that I don't mind going live. But you know, I, but I see, I see, and, I, and you know, and I see people that came way after me, two, three years after me. That's doing, you know, that just really, really is just took off and God bless them. And I'm happy for them. But I sit back and I wonder, I said, what has taken me so long? Right. What has taken me so long to to reach um, my goals and, and this and the other? But it's the clarity. It's, it's the clarity that had held me back for, for 18 months. Can I tell you this? For 18 months, I was on the fence. I was literally straddling the fence. And mm -hmm. if you if you know anything about being on the fence and if you was a kid and you was on the fence, I love that analogy that they give you because it's so true. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you straddle that fence and you can't go either way because, you know, you got the little the little prongs that's sticking in the skin. And it's like whichever way you go, it kind of dig in and it hurts. Straddling in the fence hurts. Right. I don't know if you ever did it as a child, but it's a very painful experience. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what the enemy will come in and do. He, and we know that God is not the author of confusion, right? Mm -hmm. But what we do, we would tend to come out and we get confused. Or let me just say, I was confused. I was confused about what I should do, how I should do it, right? And, and for 18 months, and mainly what it was, let me say this, because it's going to free somebody right now. And what it was, was Dr. LaShawn, is, it was figuring out, you know, coming off the job, figuring out how to monetize myself, how to monetize, right? Um, and I, I want to say ministry. When I first came out, if you remember, I was talking about monetizing ministry. Mm -hmm. right? I remember you know, that. You remember that? I was mm -hmm. saying that like five, six years ago, monetizing mm -hmm. ministry. And people, church folk was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a whole big to do. And I'm like, God, you telling me... you. You got to give me the clarity that I need. And for mm -hmm. about 18 months, I was straddling the fence. I was in pain, right? I was in confusion. And God, he freed me one day. He said, gifts are to be given. So I'm talking into the Christian entrepreneur right now. Mm -hmm. Those of you that are looking to start businesses or those of you that's looking to monetize your talents and skills, right? Uh, and, and you've been getting flat from the church folk. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to set you free right now. Listen, God told me gifts are to be given. Mm -hmm. If it's a talent or skill, then it's to be monetized. Yes. Gifts are to be given. The gift of prayer, laying on of hands, prophecy. Mm -hmm. Those things, those are gifts. Those are spiritual gifts. Those are to be given freely. Mm -hmm. However, Matthew, the book of Matthew, I think it's chapter 25, verses 18 through 40, talks about the three, the parable of the man with the talents, right? Mm -hmm. So we and so when he told me, that, he said, "So gifts are to be given, talents and skills are to be monetized." Oh yes. my God, that set me free. But it took me eighteen months to get it from the Father, right? And so that set me. That gave me a lot, of, a little bit more clarity on how to niche down, right, my talents and my skill set, and and start monetizing those. Mm -hmm. So let me see. I see a whole lot of comments how to monetize myself that part that's good sonia sanaya said that that's good brenda lester said yes amen gifts are to be given that's right clarity uh yes confirmation amen amen so i'm in the right place i'm in the right place yes right yes you all want right. it you want okay. it they 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 saying yes they confirming okay. it that's all i need i just need one dr Lashawn. if i can just help one i'm okay Right. Mm -hmm. So gifts are to be given, talents and skills are to be monetized. And so that gave me, I was able to get off the fence. 18 months of, you know, what do I do? How do I do it? Right. And, and that gave me the clarity that I need. And let me say another thing too, because what I teach people to do, um, uh, what I, what the, the lane that I chose, let me say this because we can take, I have a lot of talents and skills, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm like the man with the five talents and skills. And he said, if you be faithful over the few, he'll give, you know, He'll make you ruler over a more, or many, or much. Mm -hmm. um, 
so I have these talents and skills, right? But then it was like, where do I start? First, if you remember, I came out talking about purpose. Yes. Uh -huh. I, was mm -hmm. a, I was a purpose coach. I was a yes. spiritual midwife. I am still a spiritual midwife. You are. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I still help people to position themselves in their purpose, yes. right? But how I monetize that, per se, is by writing and self-publishing books. Yes. Teaching them how to write and self-publish books. And I start there, Dr. LaShawn, because I find that that's the easiest way for the five-fold minister to enter into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. It's taking that very thing, that test, right? That very thing that the enemy tried to use against us, the very thing that the enemy tried to take us out with, that mess, mm -hmm. and turn it into, and God used it and turned it into a testimony, a message. And I teach them how to monetize that, mm -hmm. right? So that's then clarity. So when I, um, so God told me like this, and I used to, I tell my students this too, is and because I learned this in sales, and I'm not a good salesperson, but I have taken a couple of sales classes. And in sales, they teach us don't give the customer too many options. That's true. Because, right? Because too many <laughs> options only confuse the customer. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. And when people are confused, they don't buy anything. They don't buy. Mm -hmm. They don't buy. That's so right. it is important. And that and that's what I say. So it is important for you to get clarity because mm -hmm. just like in sales, confused people don't buy. Mm -mm. Right. And and so confusion will leave you stuck. It it will it will have you um staying too long in a place that you don't want to be. So the quick quick as you can get clarity. So we we're taught only give them two choices. That's it. We give the customer only two choices because any more than that only confuse them, mm -hmm. right? So that's something you learn in sales one on one. Anyway, um, so it's important that you get the clarity that you need in order to move forward. So I want to say thank you for pushing past the stigma that the uh, religiosity of the church would put on that you can't monetize ministry. Like it's a taboo to monetize ministry. And it is not. We, we have to do something in order to, you know, make a return. Right. So it, it is not. And, and thank you for speaking to that. Um, that, that is such, that is one of those things that, that, you know, come up like, you know, mm -hmm. it's a red flag. Oh my goodness. Here they go. They mm -hmm. want money again. And it's, mm -hmm. hey, wait a minute. You, you got a whole area over here. Stuck. You're not tapping into. Right. And that's <laughs> what had me stuck. That had me confused because of the church, me not being born and raised in the church, me getting in the church, like 37 years old, around 35, 36, 37, something like that. You know what I'm saying? And and knowing like we need money, right? We not only do we need money, and this is another lie for another day, um, but we need money every day, right? Mm -hmm. We need money every day. You have expenses every day. You have needs every day. You need money every day. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, oh, that's just a whole nother lie. But I, I talk on this topic on why your job is keeping you broke, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why your job is keeping you broke. So that's one of my signature presentations. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I can tell you why that job is keeping you broke. <laughs> but but we have to monetize our talents and our skills so right and like you said there has to be a return there has to be a return not only that um what there has to be a sowing and a reaping right there's a sowing and a reaping there's a process come on come on that's the oh. part that i want to get to we it's okay to sow you know for them to sow the word I mean, you know, and then, you know, they give the word and then we we sow an offering. Right. And and it's OK to, to talk about sow and reap there. But then, you know, I was sharing with someone. Why? How come this ministry, you know, the father gave me this idea. How come this ministry won't buy this whole shopping center right here? And they, they buy this whole shopping center and they could have the church in the middle. And then one of the members could purchase the. um could purchase a building and, and have a barbershop. Another one could have a daycare. Another building could be, and et cetera, and so on. And to each one, and it remind me of like the Amish or the Jewish. And I'm, I'm not against, and I'm not trying to badger anybody, but I love how, you know, they, they, um, 
They work together. They build back into each other. And that's what it's all about. We have not been doing that. And then as soon as you want to talk about it, it's like first thing they want to come out of their mouth is, what's my discount? <laughs> you, know, uh-huh. you know what? <laughs> Go ahead now with your discount. They want anyway, yeah. but um, we monetizing in ministry is not a taboo, and I I really appreciate you you bringing that out. Us having that clarity, uh, being able to to stand up in it, and knowing that you know we have to, like you said, we need money every day, every day. And you know what? When you really get to the next level of of finance, you'll begin to make money while you're sleeping. I do. <laughs> and and that's and that's and that's when Perpetual you know. blessing. Yes. 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 When you're sleeping, you're still making money. Yeah. And that's what's supposed to be happening. Yeah. Yeah, I think that happened to me. I cannot remember the first time that that happened for me. I don't know, maybe four years ago or so. I don't I don't remember exactly, but <laughs> making money while you are asleep. That mm-hmm. oh my God. Like that is like the like that is that is that is the light. But just making money, well, not only just making money while you're sleeping, Dr. LaShawn, but what happens is you um you stop trading dollars for hours. You stop trading your yes. hours for dollars. Yes. Like, right? Like, yes. Like <laughs> that part like you have you can I like you don't have to put your hand to and that's what I teach my students and my clients like I I don't want to see not only not the fivefold minister that's my fivefold Christian publishing LLC that's the name of my business fivefold publishing because I serve I'm a serve I'm a servant to serving leaders I serve the fivefold ministry and one of the things when I first got called into the fivefold ministry that I see a lot of is um, how the fivefold minister is in the pulpit, in the church, ministering, preaching the gospel, traveling, laying on them hands, prophesying, doing all of the things, and then go out and drive an Uber. I've seen them do it. Mm-hmm. I've seen them leave the pulpit on Sunday mm-hmm. and go work day for a motor company job. Mm-hmm. Tired, exhausted. 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 I've seen bishops, bishops mm-hmm. in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. That are doing DoorDash. Mm-hmm. I, I I I just can't. I, I don't. <laughs> oh my God! But see, I'm late to this thing. I'm late. Like I said, I got into the church late. Amen. Amen. But I think it is. Um, oh my God! I, I just think it's a travesty. I think it is a travesty that when men and women of God are um, called into the fivefold minister, um, but for whatever reason uh, are working still a nine to five. Mm-hmm. That's that. Yeah, that that. And so I wanted to teach the five phone minister how to monetize, how to generate a passive income or passive reoccurring income so that they could stop trading their dollar, their hours for dollars. That's yes. what it was. And a book, a book, a book. And and so um, I mean, I could have went a couple different pl- ways, but I think um, I niched down in the book um, because all of my skill set, 28 years as an administrative assistant, you know, just played a part in it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that that's a whole nother life too. Talking about purpose, so clarity. It's important that you get clarity, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, the next one he gave me was commitment. Ah, commitment wow. is a big one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is a big one. And when he was talking to me about the commitment, right? We're still talking about I've been my I was I'm a, I was my own delay, right? Mm-hmm. I've been my own delay. Commitment. When God ministered that to me, when I was, you know talking to him about coming today, um, he put Nehemiah into my mind. All right. Right. You got to be so committed. You got to be so committed to what it is that, you know what I'm saying? That you, to whatever mandate, whatever it is that you're doing, you got to be so committed in the thing that you got to be like Nehemiah. You Mm got to refuse to come down. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's what Nehemiah, Nehemiah refused to come down. So God was speaking to me like that. You got to have that type of commitment. You got to have that type of tenacity. Mm-hmm. Right. That no matter what is going on. Right. Mm-hmm. What's going on. in life, You are committed to that thing, mm-hmm. whatever that is. So yes. lack of commitment can cause you to be delayed. Yes. Not having not being committed. 
will yep. delay you because then because then you're you're double minded because then you're wishy washy then you're going to and fro then you're like you're here today and then you kind of change your mind and but once you lock in and say okay I'm going to do it and that's it you're going to make it happen boom then it does it will pan out being committed oh so that's a big one. You got so many comments. I was trying to read these comments. <laughs> they, were, they respond and I love it. That's what they do here. I love it. I amen, love it. Amen. Love amen. Viewers. Yeah. So commitment is the big one. Um, and then um, consistency. Um, let's wait a minute. Let's start back commitment. Thank you. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. Said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. <laughs> I hear all these people say, wait a minute. Go back to commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about hey, Rebecca 2 and 2. Write the vision. Make it plain. Mm -hmm. Right? My business coach said it like this. If it's not written, you're not committing. Mm -hmm. If it's not written, you are not committing. And Rebecca 2 and 2, the word says to write the vision, make it plain, so that when men read it, would it write it on the tables of their hearts so then when men read it, they can run it? What is it? I'm paraphrasing it, y'all. But y'all know about the two and two. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, yeah, so you got to figure out what that thing is and um, and then make the commitment. Write it down, the strategy. Write it I like down. God. I love how God gives us, um, <clears throat> when he first called me off the job, right? I told y'all I was in over $100,000 worth of debt, in a bankruptcy, going through a um, divorce, one car had been repo. Another car, I told him to come and get it. I didn't mm -hmm. want it no more. Um, um, so going going through that whole process, bring it back to me, Holy Spirit. Because I just lost my, my train of thought. Da, da, da. But going through that whole process. Um, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Going through that whole process, right? God called me off that good government job and, and what have you. In one day, mm -hmm. in one day. They called me mm -hmm. off that good government job. I had $3,000 saved in mm -hmm. a 401k. 28 years of working. 28 years of working. I had $3,000 saved. Mm -hmm. I was just over broke. I was hand to mouth every day. I made good money. Made good money on my jobs. Right? But was still just over broke. God gave me five strategies. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what strategy is. You got to you gotta get the strategy. The Not the, the commitment. Um, but it also the clarity, the commitment, it requires the strategy, right? And he gave me five strategies and he called them strategies for victory. Yeah. Strategies for victory. Now, that was my first book. My first book was called From Small Coins to Big Bucks. Mm -hmm. And that book talks about that book talks about how God called me off the job and I was in all this debt in less than five years. He took me out of all of that debt. Gave me a house for cash, the very beautiful mini mansion I'm in now, $4,000 cash. My cars are all paid for cash. Like, I own everything, right? But he had to give me the strategy to get there. Mm -hmm. And so in that book, I talk about the five strategies that he gave me. They were, he called them strategies to have victory in my money. Yes. And so he gave me these five strategies. And the first was tithing, mm -hmm. right? That was the first one. And then ownership. Mm -hmm. He taught me ownership, how to how to keep the middleman out of my money. So that's a whole nother life. But I'm just saying, you got to get the strategy. Yes. You got to get the strategy. God downloaded five strategies to me that got me over that period of time, right, and set me up in the situation I'm in now. So you're going to need the strategy. And mm -hmm. that's what commitment is. Commitment is writing the vision, making it plain, and then, uh, and then developing the strategy. Right. And committing to that strategy. OK, that's what I was getting ready to say. We got to commit to the to strategy, it. to the strategy. Whew. And he gives us he gives us principles. He gives us strategies mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. But you have to. I remember when I was um, when I first got like, you know, early in the church, when I early in the church. And I remember people you say, you need to stand on the scripture, stand on the scripture. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. I would stand on scripture. I didn't really know what that meant for them, but what it meant for me. So I remember I was standing on, just say for instance, just say Psalms 24 and 7, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
When I first got saved, I believed God. I did. When God called me, I just, I was just like so glad. You know, I was just so glad he was, he was talking to me and I was praying and he was answering me. And uh, so I used to stand on scriptures mm -hmm. early on. And uh, so I said, what that mean? Because I, I heard the phrase and I kind of, I got me a strategy. Mm -hmm. And so my strategy was Psalms, say I was standing on Psalms 24 and 7. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm believing God to do something for me. So I, I find the scripture, say it's Psalms 24 and 7. So this is how I was taught. And I just probably going a little off. But tithing is the requirement and offering. They used to teach me, you know, tithing is what's required of us. Offering is what you get blessed on. I know, right? This is what they taught me in the church. Anyway, so tithing offering. Mm -hmm. So Psalms 24 and 7, I would stand on Psalms 24 and 7. And so I was in church. Shoot, I was in church Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like we was in church. When I first got saved, I was mm -hmm. in church every day of the week. I was just so glad. Mm -hmm. um, but I would give. $24.70 in Sunday school, mm -hmm. or it might be $2.47 in Wednesday night service. It might be $247 mm -hmm. in addition to my tithe that month. I mm -hmm. might say, okay, I'm going to give $247. I had a strategy. Mm -hmm. When I was standing on scripture and believing God for mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. that's how I stood on scripture. Yes. And I and my offerings, they said, Oh, you blessed by the offering. The tithe is the requirement, the blessing comes by the offering. Let me get my offering up. <laughs> that, 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 that was just me. Mm -hmm. And I do believe in giving. Giving, I heard another term early in the church. This was 2009, I think. You got to give your way out. Mm -hmm. So when I first got in the church, let me just say this I was messed up. I was tore from the flow up. I was 37 some years old. And um, I didn't have anything to give to God. I said, God, I don't know how to stop cussing, smoking, drinking, fornicating. I said, but what I can do is I can give you my money. I had a good job. I had good money. I wasn't doing nothing with it. No way. I said, I can give you my money. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. They wanted carpet for the church. I got the carpet. They need a new chairs. I got the new chairs. You need a new roof. I got the new roof. Like I just, so, and then that's just me. But so commitment, whatever the strategy is. Whatever mm -hmm. strategy God gives you, you understand? Stand come on, on that. come on. Stand on that thing. Let, so let me... when I stand on scripture, I don't just stand in and say it, right? But I, I'm going, I'm going to tithe on, I'm going to offer on that thing. I, look, that's just me now. Let, let me tell you this. That so many times I've needed the father to move. And I've taken and said a prayer and gave an offering on it and sowed into that prayer. Let me tell you, it moved. It happened. I was like believing God and I needed I needed him to do something. And I mean, I mean, some serious stuff. I'm not talking about no, no little weekend. Can I make the trip kind of stuff? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, some, you know, some serious stuff and prayed and said, OK, Father, look, and I sowed a seed on that prayer. Ooh, let me tell you, the father moved and it happened, came back and gave the testimony of how it came about. And, and then it was a, a then it was a specific number. Just mm -hmm. as you said, right? You mm -hmm. know, so and whatever that number was, you know, the father gave me. I said, "Oh, okay. Let me let me sew this," and right. then and then I wrote on there what my prayer request was, and the father moved exactly. And I was very specific in my prayer, very specific. And Amen. let me tell you, he moved exactly, and he did above more. Yes. Amen. But being committed, knowing, having that strategy, um, because a lot of times, you know, we, we ask for clarity and the father will give you clarity. He'll give you the blueprint and you trying to read it. You're like, OK, well, let me see. Uh huh. Hmm. Oh, this is going to be nice. This going to be this going to really be good. Right. We're looking mm -hmm. at it. OK. Mm -hmm. But then we still need strategy. And I tell right, you, I, I was right. I was ministering to um, a small group I have uh, on Facebook and I was at the end 
uh, the father just, you know, dealt with me and I was prophesying out to, to the group. And I was just saying, you know, father, give them strategy, give us strategy. Amen. And, and the word, just, it just came, it just came out with some other stuff, you know, de de declaring and prophesying. And, but I tell you this, when I start saying strategy, because I could see what, what the father showed me was that he was elevating uh, people to the next level mm -hmm. and some were taking off. And yes. before you take off, you need strategy. You need strategy. Because yep. if you take off, then you'll fly away if you're not grounded enough. And in order right. to be, you know, the right amount of, you know, grounding, because you don't want to be so grounded that you never have the to, to get reach that potential, right. but not, you know, so loose that you fly away. Oh, girl, that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. I hear you. Hey, man. I know. I know. <laughs> Topic. Just one show. Ooh, but let I me say come this. Back. <laughs> you you will. I gotta come back because I, I <laughs> do gotta come back. But let me say oh, this. The other day, the other morning I was awakened, um, for, you know, and I'm, I was just laying there and I said, Lord, and uh this dream I had was coming, you know, it was like playing back over my head. And I just laid there still for a moment, and I said, I said, wait a minute, God, you, you telling me something. And as it, then when, when I realized it, it was a repeat dream that I had had two other nights before. So it was like a back to back dream. And I, you know, I realized it and I, and plain as day, I said, oh, that's the strategy for it. Mm. Thank you, God. Jesus. Okay. Jesus. All right, I got it. Thank you, Lord. And that's when you get up and you hurry up and you write it down. Yes. <laughs> and you write it down. Yes. yes I yes. tell you, um, you've been your own delay because there is no strategy. There has to be a game plan. You know, yes. I think about football and when you're when you're playing that other team and the coach is there. And he has all of these different plays. He has his little playbook that he's going through. But he will look at how the other team is playing. That's right. And depending on how they are playing that day, he says, oh, that's what they doing? Oh, <laughs> I got something. Let me go back back here. Let me go back. I got, oh, I got I one back this. here for it. And he will. And he'll go to the go to a certain section. And say this, this is what we're gonna do. So he's using a different strategy. Yes, I love it. I can't mess with you. I love it. Yes. <laughs> oh, and That's he will right. give the That's father right. will give you a strategy yes. for that situation. He will give you a strategy yes. for the season that you were in. He will give you the strategy. All you have to do is ask him. You have been your own delay. Yep. We yeah. all have. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and had enough, when you going to just stop and say, Father, I need some help. I need a strategy. I need a strategy. Yeah. And he will give it to you. Yeah. It's not that the father doesn't want to perform it. It's not that the father doesn't want to answer. He's looking down over, waiting to perform. When are we going to throw some words up? This is kind of part of some of the infomercial I did the other day. When are we going to throw some faith up so he can perform? what we've asked him to do, but we won't put enough faith out there afraid instead of saying, you know what? This is way beyond what I could ask or think. Let me just, I'm going to just throw it up there, see what happens, right? And just watch God move. He will do it. Let's just like that. Yes. 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 He will give us the strategy. We got to ask for it. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. He gave, yes. He gave, he, gave us the, he gave me the strategy. Oh, my goodness. Um, And so after the strategy, clarity. The third one. After you have the clarity. You know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Uh -huh. Right. You get mm -hmm. the clarity in that thing. Then you there's the commitment. Right. Mm -hmm. Which requires the strategy. Mm -hmm. And then he said consistency. That's the one. 
see, I can't be mad. I've seen so many people come after me, Dr. LaShawn, some people that I even, uh, that even glean from me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Come after me doing so much more than mm -hmm. I'm doing. And I, and I, I can't be mad at it. I can't be mad. I look at it and I'm happy for them. And then I, but it makes me feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. how am I out here in these, these streets, these internet streets, two and a half years doing, doing this thing. And I have a, a, how do, a um, there's a, um, a, a competitor, a competitor. Mm -hmm. She's in a friendly com competition, you know, mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. her. She's in, she's, um, She's a, a pastor as well. Mm -hmm. She made like $47,000 in the month of December. Made like almost $100,000 in eight months. I I've been doing it for two years. I mean, I, and I said, well, why is it? What is it? Why did it? She came after me doing way and consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Right? I've been my own delayed because of my inconsistency. Woo! Right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying consistency. <laughs> I just say drop the mic. No, there's a inconsistency, right? Inconsistency. And so God had to had to minister that to me as well. Clarity, the commitment. So knowing what to do, having the strategy to get it done, but then also the consistency. And that's where I fall off some. So I, you know, and and I don't know if that's that's been your story as well, but consistency is a big one, right? And if, if you look at successful people, um, the wealth speaker and some of the successful business coaches and that's out here in the internet streets, one thing about them is that they are consistent. They're consistent. They're consistent. And what they said they're going to do. Mm-hmm. They're consistent. They're consistent. So, yeah. So when you know what to do and you have the strategy to get it done, you have to implement. Mm -hmm. You have to implement and you have to implement um, and you have to be consistent in it. So and that and that's where I'm I'm at now. Um, trusting myself. I, it was Lick, Lisa Nichols. I heard um, one time that says and, you know, she earns um, hundreds and thousands of dollars. I think mm -hmm. she's probably probably a millionaire, I'm sure by now. Um, but one thing she said. And when I listened to her talk, she said, I trust myself to implement, to execute. That's what she said. I yeah. trust myself to execute. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. That's a big, that's big. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Do you trust you to execute? And so I had to, you know, I asked myself that all the time. Okay, you're getting ready to make this big investment. I just made a $15,000, well, almost $18,000 investment in my business. Because mm -hmm. I want to take it somewhere. And so I made this $18,000 investment um, and it had me feeling some type of way. And it's it's not about the money. It do I trust myself enough to execute? Ooh, come on. To be consistent, mm -hmm. to get the money back, right? Come on. Mm -hmm. To make the money back. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's where I'm at. Not only do I need the clarity right to move forward mm -hmm. but i need to the strategy the commitment i need to write it down make mm -hmm. it plain mm -hmm. i need the strategy and then i need to be consistent in that thing yes right be mm -hmm. consistent in that and i believe this is my life's purpose right yes this is my life's purpose so i need to be consistent in that so that's it that's all i have <laughs> but i've been my own delay uh, 51 years old now um, but one thing about our father, he is so uh, his he's so kind and loving that he will redeem the time. He will redeem yes. the years. He will redeem, right? The time that that what do you say? What the the locust, the canker worm, canker the pomegranate, worm, and, worm, worm, yes. and look at me, I'm fifty, going on fifty two years old, and I look good. Oh, wait, I'm good. Yeah, girl. That don't crack. You know, and um, even with all of this been going on, right? The pandemic and all, right? So I just, yeah, I'm glad about it. Yes. This last one, being uh, consistent. When mm -hmm. I think about men in the Bible, when I was talking to the Lord about today, he brought up Nehemiah in my spirit. Mm -hmm. He brought up Jonah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He brought up Jonah, his lack of consistency, how Jonah ran, mm 
Mm -hmm. Did he run to Tarzan? He he ran. He, <laughs> you know, he, the nerve of you want, want to it. save no. them. What? <laughs> I ain't, you know, I ain't so got Don't time. be Jonah. Don't be a Jonah. I thought no. about that. You know, and we just sometimes, you know, we can be running in place, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Running, standing still. Yeah. So definitely Jonah came up in my spirit. But that's Ooh, it. So clarity, no commitment, and consistency, y'all. That's all I have. Consistency. Running, running, and, and uh, not going anywhere. And not going anywhere. Moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, we. That'll oh, preach. We. My goodness, let me tell you, th this consistency, um, I like that. I was um, I was speaking with a uh, pastor th this morning. We kept trying to reach each other, and um, I was asking her about, you know, being on the show, and, you know, we're planners, right? So I'm already working on weeks and months ahead. <laughs> That's I'm, right. Yeah, we... <laughs> We're not working on the day show. We're working on weeks and months ahead. That's right. And... Um, and her and I were talking and she said, well, you know, one thing you've always been consistent in what you do. You have Dr. LaShawn. I said, oh, well, amen. <laughs> you know, when she said it, it, it hit, you know, you don't really think about it until somebody says it out loud to you. Mm -hmm. But I know in my own practice and the way that I do things myself, I try to be. Cause I like things a certain way and do things in a certain order, you know, my own <laughs> processes. Yeah. But um, I tell you this, that when you said that it resonated with me because even with my daily day to day, if I'm consistent in those things, because I like them in a certain way, in a certain stature, in a certain alignment, in a mm -hmm. ah, hee, in a certain posture, right? Mm -hmm. And I want it a certain, then I'm I'm consistent. And if if I'm off, if I'm not being consistent at that moment, if I'm off, then somebody knows something's not something's not right. Something must be up. Something's going on. You okay? You know, they start checking on me, then you uh -huh. okay? Cause, <laughs> something ain't right. And I'm saying all that to say that um, that resonated more because if I if I like things that way in my day to day uh, work that I do, then how much more should I then implement that consistency in the products, in the things that mm -hmm. I'm doing for this? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being just that much more consistent. That's right. In this. So th as I am, mm -hmm. then it shall be. Right. And then to the next level. Right. Oh, my goodness. You said a word right there, prophetess. Amen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I've watched you. I watched you over the years. I watched you going from the cell phone and being outside. Remember? <laughs> I know. <laughs> They didn't even have Facebook Live. They didn't even have huh. Facebook. There was no Facebook Live then. I would record it. Record. And yeah. go home and edit. Yeah. And then I would upload the video. Upload so the video. Nobody knows. I was doing it before there was a Facebook Live. I remember. I remember. And look at you now. But I love the show. It's an amazing show. You got so many people here following and commenting. So, yes, as you were consistent in that thing. And I remember when you used to record those videos and upload them. And they weren't always the clearest. They weren't always the best. But you kept coming I, with them. And I kept, kept coming. <laughs> and kept coming. Amen and amen. But look at, look, look at you now. <laughs> Got a whole backdrop. And <laughs> right, right. Look, Cheryl said back when you were recording upload videos. Yes, Cheryl. Yes. Remember that? Yes, Cheryl. Yes, that part. She remembers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I tell you, can, look, can, can sit inside with a backdrop and, and a big, big hot ring light and, <laughs> and sip on my water when I need to and, and have a conversation. Yeah, yes, yes. But uh, I bless God for that. And, um, uh, Reverend Rita, I, I just want to bless you and uh, I bless God for you and all that you're doing. Uh, you you are definitely making a footprint in the kingdom 
And uh, I just prophesy over you and your business that it, it shall continue to grow. Um, it Amen. is growing, but I, I, I prophesy that it'll grow by leaps and bounds. And it'll exceed that goal that you set, that mental goal. Yes. Um, it, it'll exceed it. And uh, it'll go on. You'll go on to that next level because it's yeah. time. You're doing yeah. And you're yeah. ready for it mentally. And, and so yeah. I, 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 I prophesy it come forth. Amen. And I received that. I was telling God today, or I, you know, tell them oftentimes, but you know, I love my life's work. I love my life's purpose. I do. I really, really do. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I would do it for free. Like, like I love it so much. You know what I'm saying? My, my business is my business, right? We got to make money in it. Right. Um, so we have the ministry. I have the 501 C three and then I have the LLC. Right. And I, the business needs to make money to, to keep going and to keep. But I told the Lord yesterday, I said, I do it for free, though. <laughs> like, I love what he's called me to that much. Mm -hmm. Right. My, I love my work that much that I will I will do it for free. Yeah. So but ministry, we know ministry is that part of us that's given. Right. And but then we have the business part of us. And he said, if you be faithful over a few, that he will make you ruler over much. Right. Yeah. So I teach five old ministers how to monetize their talents and their acquired skill sets. Right. Because that's what God gave us each talent. Some mm -hmm. he gave one, one man, he gave two, one man, he gave five mm -hmm. talents. Right. That's and right. Um, and so just learning how to monetize those and and um, generate passive recurring income is very important for the five fold minister. Very important. Very important. Very. And then and not only that, they when I see them, Dr. LaShawn. Teach and then after that, they can make great kingdom contributions, right? That's yes. what the money is for to help the kingdom because ultimately it all goes back to the kingdom, it all goes back to the kingdom, everything that we do, right? It does. So, and I definitely appreciate you this earlier when you said that you know, I have watched, I went this weekend and supported a client of mine, mm -hmm. um, did an amazing job. And uh, just watching them grow, all my clients just watching them grow and soar. So when you said I touch them and then they go and touch hundreds of people. And she literally did. She literally uh, did this weekend touch many, many people. So I received that. Right. Yeah. Amen. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Amen. All right. yes. That's something that I had to learn. It's, it's not how many that I've helped right here. And it's, it's those that then go out and help the others. That's right, Cheryl said. And so you will never work another day. That part. Mm -hmm. ah, that part. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Good old, good old Cheryl. She uh she has her, she working her business too. Amen. Businesses. Let me put an S on there. Her businesses. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, hey. We had an awesome, awesome show. Oh, my goodness. We, we could have kept going, you guys. Thank you. Uh, don't don't disconnect us, Jen. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I felt you get ready to click. You was getting ready to click. <laughs> Just roll up. We got an outro on her this way. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> I enjoyed you, Reverend Rita. Yes, ma'am. We definitely have to get you back on here. We'll, we'll schedule it, get it on your calendar. Okay, um, okay. I appreciate you, ma'am, uh, for taking the time to come. And, and we really dove into this topic. Um, we really appreciate you and all that you've spoken to us and how you just, oh, those those, those keys, those three keys you brought were very, very timely Amen. and very, Amen. very much needed. Did you have any last words or anything before? No, I would just, I would look forward to, I look forward to coming back. Um, teaching you guys how to leverage your God-given um, talents and acquire skill sets. Like there's so much more that we could talk about. So, you know, maybe at the end of this year, beginning of next year, you could fit me in and um, we could talk some more um, about shifting these mindsets because the mind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> yes, yes, that right there. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for joining us. 
We had a mindful conversation. Thank you for joining Shifting Mindsets Live show. I'm Dr. LaShawn. I am the founder of Embrace the Change. And uh, wow, I just want you all to join me on September 2nd is our next live show. And we have a great speaker and a great topic Look for the flyer. It'll be out soon. And we look forward um, to that show. Thanks again for joining.